Welcome to Wishlist Wanderer. We've been talking about a lot of things of, about vacations. We've talked some destinations. We've talked with some different vendors. But the question always becomes, <laughs> how do I pay for this trip and how do I budget? So I brought in podcast host extraordinary <laughs> Brian Rea from Doing Business Right, who does bookkeeping to help answer those questions. Brian, thank you for joining us today. It's great to be here, Paul. Thank you so much for having me and inviting me to be on the show and talk about, obviously, I love travel as much as me, but I also love money <laughs> as, as much as anybody, So and talking about money. Well, is there such thing as a free vacation? Well, uh, well, yeah, I guess, if you, I guess if you stay home, but even then you have to pay your bills. <laughs> well, that's not a vacation. That's not a vacation. <laughs> Um, you just went to Washington D.C., did you not? Yeah, I had a, an awesome trip. You know, and, and thank you so much for putting that together. You know, for me and my dad, it was really important for me to go see that. Um, and I knew I was going to have some money, uh, but I wanted to have a great experience for him because I knew it was his first time to Washington D.C. And I want we're both kind of history buffs. I was like, Dad, you got to go. So we did it, and I'm so, I saw I just. <laughs> photo dumped just pictures of pictures and videos of just recently of all that stuff so just trying to like i need to get this done so thank I, you i love planning trips for history buffs mm -hmm. because i have a history degree yeah and i don't know if you know this i grew up in that area oh you didn't I, you did not tell me that no I'm, I'm originally from the baltimore annapolis area oh, okay so we always went into dc yeah that's just right up there i wish you would have stayed one more day because i would have sent you to annapolis oh really um it's the oldest state capital that's continuously working mm. that has also served as our nation's capital. I think I did know that. I did know that because we were talking about the, you know, because we went to the capital and obviously the capital has kind of moved, especially in the first early years of, of the country from here to here. And they mentioned Annapolis. So, well, what is the one thing you would suggest that when people are planning their vacation that they, that they should do? And I'm going to give you mine after you give us your idea um uh, well i i think financially speaking i think you um my piece of advice is to be um reasonable in your expectations of what you can afford for you and your family so that you can properly plan beforehand but also afterwards you don't want to go into post vacation debt and be pay, paying off a trip for you know potentially years and years so i think there's um, the financial part but i think there are so many trips out there that are reasonable that you can get for a very good deal and i think that's understanding where you want to put your money and where you don't want to put your money well I think that one thing that I run across is people have a Waldorf Astoria yeah. <laughs> um, dream uh -huh. and they have a Motel 6 budget. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having those dreams. Maybe you just book a little farther out mm -hmm. and pay monthly instead of paying it all up front. Exactly. Um, one thing that most people don't realize is travel is a supply and demand business. Mm. And Americans have historically waited until the last minute <laughs> to purchase their trips yeah. when there's less availability. So there tends to be more... Supply and demand. Supply they, and demand. They get more expensive to get those spots. Um, I like to say, if I have 10 apples and one buyer, that one buyer is getting a heck of a deal <laughs> on those 10 apples. Yeah. But if I have one apple and I have 10 buyers... I'm getting a heck of a deal for that apple. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I, well, I think that you know, it goes back to awareness about what you want. And I think the the early planning thing and and getting that booking sooner rather than later is a huge portion because obviously that can save you money in the long run. Um, but also, I think it actually commits you to like, okay, well, if you are going to be paying it, say in a monthly payments, well. We got this trip in a year. We need to <laughs> start actually saving for it instead of dreaming about it and just going like, well, maybe if we save some money, we can do that. No, you've committed to it. You got to start saving to it and actually make it into your budget plan. Well, I had a gentleman who was retired. He was going to take two of his children who were retired. Mm -hmm. He was an elderly gentleman and they were planning a trip and he wanted this specific itinerary. Oh, okay. And. It was going over a major holiday when schools were uh -huh. out, and each of the cabins 
were ten thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> Oof. And this gentleman could easily afford yeah. that. Yeah. And since I knew they were all retired, I asked him, Well, if I could save you money, would you go three weeks earlier since you're all retired? Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, how much money are we talking about? I said, I can get you all three rooms for the price of one room just by moving it off of Christmas and New Year's mm-hmm. and going three weeks earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, I didn't even know that was available. And that is one of the advantages of using a travel advisor is sometimes mm-hmm. we know exactly when when's the best time mm-hmm. to um, buy, but also... When is the best um, time to travel? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily when to buy, but when the, to travel. Event. Um, because when schools are out, mm-hmm. prices tend to be higher because you have a lot of families traveling and that sort of stuff. So in your planning for your your trip, what were some of the expenses that you planned for and what caught you by surprise when you when you arrived in your destination that you weren't expecting? Um I, uh, well, we'll start with the easy ones, right? So when I started, you know, thinking about this trip, I knew that I was going to have, you know, um, a a nice little chunk of money. And I was like, well, I know there's going to be obviously my airfare and my hotel. And I knew that I wanted like over an extended weekend. So over four days, like like I said, it was a Friday through a Monday trip. So um, I I felt pretty confident about, okay, what that was going to be. And then it's like, okay, what about the excursions and and extras? And I think for me, I was like knowing that my my father is 72 years old, right? And yes, he can walk and he's mobile and he can get around, but he's not like, you know, (laughs) a 20-year-old who can just like, yeah, let's go walk five miles around the entire National Mall and, you know, and then, you know, repeat the next day for four days in a row. So I was thinking, being very aware of that. So I was like asking about like the those excursions that actually had like some driving tours that wasn't walking all the time. Um, and those had a great value. To me, that was a wonderful value because I was like, you know, it was nice not to have to walk everywhere. Um, but I think uh, some of the planning things I, I did think plan about for food. Knowing that, you know, we were getting some food and we actually, you know, we did go out, but there was a couple nights where it was like, we just ordered some food at the hotel uh, just to kind of save some money and, you know, and also some transportation costs. Um, I do think um, transportation is always, I think, one of that X factor that I think a lot of people kind of forget in that budgeting. They're like, yes, we can get you there, but if you want to like get to places while you're there, whether through Ubers or taxis or Lyft or whatever you're doing, well, those fees can really kind of add up um, if you're not really careful, uh, especially if you want to like, uh, like for, for ours, you know, we had to go to some excursions, but the excursion start point was a couple miles away. So therefore it's like, oh, we got to get an Uber and <laughs> yeah, you get over there. Um, so I think that that's something to be aware of is about, um, now, fortunately it wasn't, you know, deal breaking. It was like, you know, 10 bucks to, to get there. Um, but if I had not known that, or if like the excursion start point was a much farther away and I didn't really plan on how to get to that, I can see it costing a lot of money for people like to, to get that. Well, as the one who planned those excursions, <laughs> I will tell you that I told you ahead of time. Yes, you did. And w- I looked at the options for them to pick you up at the airport or not the airport, but at your yeah. hotel. Well, both actually, and it was much cheaper for you to get an Uber. Yeah, um, it's not as convenient, but sometimes you pay for convenience. Yeah, no, and 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 but but we're also like you know I was in a big city, right, and therefore there's Ubers and taxis all the time. So I was able even a couple times I even just asked you know there was actually a taxi right outside the door. I was like you know I'll just get. A, taxi for this trip um and then like ubers they were always there within just a couple minutes so i didn't have a long wait time but i could see if you were in a more uh remote place that didn't have quite the robust transportation system you know it might (laughs) be worth to like you know what just to have somebody pick us up at 9 a.m so that it's taken care of well and I, we haven't shared what city, and I'm not going to. No. <laughs> um, if you want to, you can. But I know that city has a pretty robust um, public transportation. Yes. I not always suggest that in some cities. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to 
some places. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. A, it's much faster than using an Uber to use public transportation. Mm-hmm. And you can buy tr- public transportation cards that will take yes. you from place yes. to place. Mm-hmm. Um, just a couple of – it didn't apply in your trip, but if you're going overseas – and you get off like a cruise or you're going somewhere and you are touring, let's just say like Italy and Rome. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of major tourist attractions mm-hmm. and you find a ton of restaurants there. Walk two or three blocks away mm-hmm. and look for the locals and you will save a ton of money. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, well, I think even yeah, I think definitely overseas. But you know, even locally, you know, um, uh, one one time, one of the days, um, we actually we did take an Uber to go into a little bit deeper into. We went to Chinatown, we went to the Chinatown area because we like we wanted to explore, you know, the Asian food, right? And so we we drove there, you know, got the Uber, right, and we were able to find a very reasonably priced options for that. So sometimes, like, well, yeah. I'm paying a little bit more for transportation, but the actual food costs, you know, and we, we were able to eat really well, explore. We actually hit a couple different places for that, you know, and it was and uh, opposed to like hitting like the major <laughs> restaurants that can be expensive. Well, I remember one trip I took for an insurance conference to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Best Chinese food I ever had. Yeah. And I asked the concierge <laughs> of the hotel where to go. And he sent me to a place that was pretty expensive. Huh. And, and I'm looking around, and I see this line of Chinese individuals. Yeah. American Chinese. Because mm-hmm. I'm not eating Chinese <laughs> Chinese food. I'm not into chicken heads and fish heads and chicken feet. Oh, come on, Paul. That's great. Yeah. Oh, um, my wife brings some of that home. and uh, You're like, I'll pass. You're going to some food. <laughs> and... I saw this line, and mm-hmm. it was going up the stairs to a small dive. Yeah. Best sesame seed chicken I've ever had. I mean, just finding the dives. Yeah. Well, I think that's like, like the locals like or, or the ethnicity that you actually want to eat. You know, you know if, you're, if you're in Italy, right, go find where the Italians are eating. If you're, you know, if you're in San Francisco and Chinatown, well, if there's, you know, Chinese or American Chinese in that area, there's probably a good chance. Or if you look inside the restaurant and it's a whole bunch of American Chinese or Chinese in there, it's like, that's probably a good hint that maybe this is probably a pretty good option. I was told by a local in Italy, if you walk in and the menu's in English, turn around and walk out. (laughs) (laughs) Because they're catering to tourists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It's it's, it's good advice. You know, it's, it's, I mean, when you think about it, it's like if you're in, Italy, and you really want to get authentic kind of, a, you know, Italian food or whatever country destination you're at, well. He said the best places to go is where there's no pictures and it's all in Italian. Pull out your phone, Google Translate. That's right. <laughs> and the price is going to be cheaper and the food's going to be better. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's get back to what this yeah. podcast is about besides good good food uh, which and finding doing? it cheaply. Um <laughs> What were some other expenses that you saw? Like, did you include tipping in your in your budget? Actually, I did. I actually did. Uh, being part of the service industry, um, I'm always very aware. Oh, well, I mean, both my dad and I have a background, you know, in the service industry and understand the value of that. Like, and so um, I actually pulled out a couple hundred dollars just of cash, you know, that I was knew I was like this is probably going to be tips, you know, for all of that. And um, just because, you know, you get an excursion, you know, I want to, you know, be able to tip just, you know, a bill there. Uh, if I, uh, the walking tour, you know, make sure I can, you know, you know, tip our tour guide or whoever there. So um, I definitely did have that. But um, do please budget for tipping. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Uh, that's my, this is my little advocacy for the service industry, you know, and the people who are actually working for you. I'm going to put the brakes on that real really? quick. <laughs> and here's the reason why. In a lot of countries, yeah. tipping is considered an insult mm. because they're like, oh, you don't think we get paid enough to, in our yeah. jobs, you feel like you have to tip us. 
And it's, there's countries throughout the world mm. where that is actually an insult. Mm. So it's important to know Which the tipping ones? custody exactly. of the locals. Yeah, when I was living in South Korea, that, that's one of the countries that you don't tip there. And so uh, it was a very like kind of culture shock, like just pay the bill and call it a day. And, and, and we actually, and some, and some of our American soldiers there, they'd be like, well, let's, let's give them a tip. And then and they were so confused <laughs> that they were like, um, no, um, we're, they don't need to give us extra money. They're, what do I do with this extra money? So, uh, but yeah, definitely understand uh, customs cultures. I just knew that since we're staying in America, I was like, make sure you do that. If you're in America. <laughs> well, and there's some places where um, some resorts in the Caribbean mm-hmm. that they pay their employees well enough that if they get caught taking a tip, they get fired. So it's yeah, important. That, yeah. mm-hmm. It's important to know. Um, I mean, it's specific to a specific brand, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to mention that brand because, well, that's just I don't want to put that out there. Yeah. Um, so, what sort of tools do you use when planning and budgeting for? A vacation, and what would you suggest other people use? Uh, so, I think when planning for a vacation, I think put it in writing. Um, that's the biggest thing. And I, and you know, I know some people are like they actually will write on a piece of paper, and you know, they're looking at all that type of stuff. I like to um, I like to use like somebody's spreadsheet because I like to actually like I'll copy and paste links of things or options or ideas or or, or just <laughs> links of just resources so that I can have of, of maybe, you know, if there's a currency rate or if there's a, a trend or, you know, what's like a current price or if let's say it's a restaurant that I really want to go to. All right. I want to like, I'll, t- I'll actually take a link of, of not just the location, but, you know, maybe their menu to I can see what the prices are so that I, when I start kind of working out the budget, then um, and I also like that on uh, spreadsheets, you can easily tally and add things up and, you know, some, you know, this whole section there. Um, or you can uh, make multipliers really easy. Uh, say, all right, for one person, it's going to cost this. So if it's going to be two adults, right, then, you know, multiply it by two. You can, And it's easy to adjust that and modify um, for when you're planning what your budget will be. Well, for full disclosure, <laughs> we're going to have your form. That's right. <laughs> um, we're going to have a link to that where you can sign up, and we will email you that link. Yes, if you sign up yeah. for it. Yeah, I'm actually. Yeah, I'm trying to develop a a really simple, basic, easy form of kind of like all the major things. Um, um, and if and if I can do it right, you know, I actually have even some of the multipliers already kind of made in there, so that you can just say, you know, how many people are in your trip? It, you say here, how many adults, how many kids? And that way, you can kind of get the numbers. It takes a little bit of tweaking, but uh, I'm a, I, I like working with that type of stuff and making sure it looks pretty and, and easy and and simple to follow. Is that why you're a bookkeeper? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I'm a bookkeeper. <laughs> um, well, I will, can I give you a couple of tips that I think will save people money? Yeah. What's, what do you got? When you're planning your trip, always use a travel advisor. That's, yeah. that's my advice. Well, yeah, period. Yeah. W- we know different things. Mm-hmm. Um, but plan your flights first because the greatest um, difference in your pricing is not going to be your hotels. Mm-hmm. It's going to be your flights. A flight can be off by three hours difference, and it can be $1,000 per person. Yeah. So look, plan your trips around mm-hmm. um, the flight availability and the cheapest flights that you want. Mm-hmm. And the farther out you plan, um, you're, I'm going to say for cruises mm-hmm. and guided tours, you can't really plan your flights around those mm-hmm. because they're leaving on specific days. But you can arrive a couple days early mm-hmm. or leave, leave a, couple a couple days, days late. later. Exactly. Um, which can save you significantly on your flights. Mm-hmm. Flights have the greatest variance in price from day to day. So always. Well, it seems look- like from hour to hour sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some flights like I looked in the morning and suddenly in the afternoon it's like this was <laughs> it's that supply and demand yeah it's crazy um, also look at leaving out of different places mm-hmm. um, I have priced flights to Rome out of XNA at $1700 the same day 
flying out of um, DFW, it was four hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Wow! I don't know about you. Yeah, I'll save a thousand dollars per person and drive to DFW. Yeah, I mean it's only a five-hour drive. Mm-hmm. Um, some people say, "Well, just catch a flight earlier." Well, then you have to get your luggage, exit the airport. <laughs> And re-enter the airport mm-hmm. and go through international and check in again. Yeah. So there's really not enough time to hit those international flights flying out of X and A, even if you leave first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know people will um, buy flights that stop over in a city they're going to go to because they can find a flight to another city that stops there cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, w- I do not suggest that because it's against the airline's policies mm. and they will ban you from the airline mm. and you might not be able to fly home <laughs> yeah. because you did that. Yeah. And then- um, <laughs> because the pricing is set in a way to um, make it the best value for the consumers. Mm-hmm. And I know it sounds like, well, I'm paying cheaper if I do this. But what that does is it ruins the flight for the second half of that leg, mm-hmm. and it makes it more expensive, so it drives up the price of the overall ticket. Mm. If Because there might be additional people getting on at that location mm-hmm. um, yeah, exactly. that are going to lower the price. But if you get off, it doesn't make that flight profitable. So therefore, when something's not profitable... What do they do? That's right. <laughs> Prices go up. Mm-hmm. So um, that would be two of the two of the things. I would also say pay your deposits mm-hmm. to reserve your rooms. Now, flights you have to pay for pretty much up front. Yeah. Um, and wait until the final payment to pay the rest of it and put that money back into a um, – Savings account Mm -hmm. or money market account, Mm -hmm. whichever one you prefer. And that will save you money and you're going to gain interest. Yep. While, and you're still going to be able to pay for your trip. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one piece of advice I give to a lot of my clients. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want them to pay for the trip. And the last thing, it sounds like it's going to cost more money. And it does initially. Buy travel insurance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, because what most people don't realize is that your health insurance, 99% of American health insurance does not mm-hmm. work in international companies, exactly. countries. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just got, I just saw an email, which I sent out, actually. <laughs> I have now included... <laughs> A story where Tyler Perry, you know, the billionaire comedian, Mm -hmm. actually paid for a family out of Atlanta's medical bills in Cancun because he went into diabetic shock while on a cruise ship. Oh, wow. They took his passport when he went into into the hospital and then... Wouldn't give it back to him until he paid the bill. Well, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I don't have fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, sitting in the bank ready to pay a hospital bill mm-hmm. because that's why I buy health insurance here. Yeah, and I had one client who went to Ireland, never bought travel insurance before, and they bought it this time. He had a massive heart attack. <sighs> Mm. The, between the medical bills and flying back to the U.S. with medical staff with him was close to $500,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> he spent $500 on, the, on health insurance, I mean, on the travel insurance. Uh, well, I don't know about you, but I'd rather spend $500 than $500,000 because that would have wiped out his, oh, yeah. his house, mm-hmm. his... Retirement savings, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your ideas on that? You no, know, well, yeah, I, I am definitely a fan of. Uh, again, you're hoping for the best, 
right? But you want to kind of prepare for the worst. So making those small investments, with the, especially with international travel, any type of international travel, it's totally worth getting those plans uh, and figuring out your options and making sure. And also, I think also understanding what it actually covers and what it doesn't, um, I think is just, is this part of the good planning process? And if it's a couple extra dollars for something, it's worth it. It's, you know, again, or you, you hear these really bad scenarios and situations that can potentially happen. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's, especially, especially as it for international travel. For me, it's the one product I sell that I hope no one uses. Yeah, exactly. It's sort you, of like our policemen and firemen. Yeah, you hope you never see them. You know, I, yeah, <laughs> in that in that bad way. In, I mean, I hope that one day as a country we don't need policemen because everyone is following the law mm-hmm. and we're not hurting each other, and that we don't need emergency services to show up at our house because we've had heart attacks and that sort of stuff. I mean, I would like one day a year for them all to get paid to sit on their hands and do nothing <laughs> because there's no reason to use them. Mm-hmm. When I sell travel insurance, I'm not hoping my clients have to use it. Mm-hmm. I don't want them yeah. to use it, I, but I want the peace of mind that they're covered. And that is part of the budgeting process. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had someone say, you're just selling this to make commissions. No. In reality, if you book a trip like you did, Mm -hmm. if you didn't go on your vacation, yeah, it hurts that you you missed the vacation. But you've already spent that money. It's not going to hurt you long-term financially. Like if you had a medical emergency and you had to pay for it out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uh, exactly. Yeah. And I think part of planning your budget for your vacation is planning – how it's going to affect the rest of your your financial picture. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, how much would you suggest that people look at their vacation budget? How much should they be putting apart as a percentage of their um, of their budget? Would you say? Uh, well, I, I think as far as percentage or budget, I, um, you know, it again it depends on what your I know, I'm sure you know, the people out there who are like travel fiends and they just want <laughs> to travel as much as they can. And they're basically putting, you know, 30 percent of their stuff to like to, to the next trip because they just got to get the next experience. But I think it's very reasonable if you uh, do our planning for your family, if you can put at least 10 to 15 percent on a regular basis um, for a travel entertainment type of budget um would be would be great and again that practice uh, again sooner rather later even if you don't know exactly where you want to go maybe today if you start just doing that because an opportunity will come up and as you know like sometimes just great deals like just like oh my goodness we got this great deal and, and if you had that money kind of already kind of there to please put a deposit down like it's it's totally worth it because sometimes you just don't know when those travel opportunities are going to be um so if you can do 10 15 percent i would totally totally recommend doing that obviously if you can do more if you want to do a more extravagant travel then then increase that but even if you're just doing five percent right you know you are on a budget you know you're trying to you know get we talked about like you know protecting your financial health you know um through through the process during this process and after the process, uh, making sure that's good. One thing I want to talk about with financial health, with travel, especially if you're doing a bigger trip, um, I think some people forget sometimes the loss of income because, uh, like, say for me, um, if I were to take a two-week trip, right, that's taking me away from my business, which therefore is take going to lower potentially some of my potential revenue um if you're an independent contractor you're doing something like that or you know even if you're uh you're you're doing a side gig like a a doordash driver or an uber driver on the side well you're thinking oh yeah i make this much money all the time well when you're on vacation you're not making that money so uh sometimes you actually have to plan a little bit more to kind of offset those your regular bills because your that income is being affected 
of during that time of travel. Uh, I don't I don't want to mention that as far as the as far as planning and you know cash flow and understanding that because sometimes people like oh yeah I make all this money yet yeah, and I want to take a month long trip. I was like a month long trip. Did you? Are you still going to be making money on that one month you're gone? Oh, I didn't think about that. Did you put that in? The, are you putting that on the form? Lost lost income? Is that going to be on the form? Um, yeah, I, I think I, when I mention it now, I think I will. Well, well, I think it's just like, again, some people, if you have vacation days, like paid vacation days, like because if you're working for a company or a corporation, it's like, yep, you are going to get paid while you're gone. Then, you know, then maybe it's not a huge worry about it. But especially for like in a tip industry. You know, even though they might pay you while you're on vacation, but it's only it's the lower amount. But you're getting those tips on top of that. That's the actual, but you're not going to get those tips. So I think I will actually include that because uh, originally I was just like just going to mention it, but I might like, maybe I'll make that little tweak to it because that's a big one. You don't want to. <laughs> well, Brian, I want to thank you for coming mm-hmm. on the Wishless Wanderer. Oh, thank you, Paul. Um, we'll put your contact information in the show description, and we're coming up. Our time is out. Oh, I know. I, Tell us about your business real quick. You have one minute. All right. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So again, uh, I am Dr. Brian Ray, and I do have a business called uh, DBR Bookkeeping, Doing Business Right. Um, and I, again, I help entrepreneurs, small business owners uh, maximize their efficiencies through bookkeeping services. So I look at numbers all the time, and I'm talking about you know budgets and costs and comparing it. How What are ways that they can maximize their money so that they can be, you know, they can have money to go on trips with their families. <laughs> um, I also have my Doing Business Right podcast uh, where we're talking about business practices. And, I, and if you go search on Amazon, DBR Publishing, I actually have books out there for about entrepreneurship and for small business owners. And so trying to advocate for just good practices. That's what I do. Doing Business Right with DBR Bookkeeping. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to The Bridge of Northwest Arkansas, which is our great producing company. Have a great day.